weekly update and all of my FTF Ellers. Welcome back to another edition of the FTFL Weekly Update, Week 12. We've been doing this now for three months. Three months! Unbelievable. Great responses. Love the feedback. Fan mail, guests. This show has been awesome as we get closer and closer to the playoffs. Teams need to get better, and I promise you this show is going to get better yet. More surprises, more new segments. It's all coming down the pipe in the next few weeks. We've got one week of the FTFL regular season left. Five teams, Jeff, Sid, Deesa, Matt, and Andy, are all in the playoffs. One spot remains. Is it going to be Adam Swart? Is it going to be Adam Saltmarsh? The Battle of the Adams, but not against each other. We'll get to that in just a moment. Um, Hagen continues to assault the message board, continues to tout how great his team is, quite possibly the greatest team money can buy. That is why, from here to forth, I will be referring to Kramerica as the Yankees. That's right. The Yankees might be the best team that money can buy. We'll see if money buys them all that they want for this holiday season. Uh, you know, and this week, the Yankees take on Manamana. Nine and three, division leaders, first round by takers. Fantasy Bowl preview? We'll find out. Um, we have a brand new segment this week I think you're going to really enjoy. Now let's get to the games. First up, the aforementioned Yankees taking on the Architects, another high school buddy battle. And again, although this time, take that back, flipped. Last time it was the Architect winning, this time it's the Yankees with a new league record of 145 points. Money can buy you a lot of points. Can it buy you the title, Mr. Hagen? We're going to find out. To the Architects, really good 92. But obviously up against 145, it's just not going to matter. The Buzzsaw in full effect. Breeze at 36. Shady with 27. The first meaningful game Shady has played. Is this the trend we're going to see? If you are Hagen, you've got your fingers crossed. And hoping so, Jordan Reed. Hasn't he had like 10 concussions? Why is he still playing? He's putting his own health and his, his family's, you know, well-being in jeopardy. Get off the field. Get out of there, Jordan Reed. Your brain, your brain, protect it. Um, six and nine of the players on the Yankees uh, scored in double digits. DeMarco Murray, six and a half, his lowest point total. And if the Derrick Henry outburst has anything to say about what's going to happen going forward, then maybe, just maybe, the DeMarco Murray train is slowing down. Um, if you're the architect, Ezekiel Elliott, 21, uh, Eli Manning, 20, uh, players each, either on his team, the players on the team either scored in double digits or below three points. Four players below three points definitely didn't help in the end. He's in the playoffs. We just now have to see who he's going to face and if he's going to get his lineup in. Next up, the Menominee, eight and three versus the Radioactive. I'm free falling. Monkeys, five and six. They have now lost four in a row because this week, 79 points was not enough to beat the 88 and a half of Menominee. Brady, 16. David Johnson, 20. Antonio, three touchdowns. I can count to three. Math teacher, Mr. Markser, 26 and a half points for Antonio on Thanksgiving night. Got lucky because Brandon Cooks. Zero. Survived that number. Markster does wrap up the first round by. If the radioactive monkeys, four in a row, is all sorts of bad news. Cam Newton finally showed up with a huge game, 30 points. Devontae Adams, 20 and a half. But for the second time this year, 110.5 points on the bench. Not that, but the second time his bench has outscored his starters. This is the fourth loss in a row. But that window is open ever so slightly for Mr. Saltmarsh. It is there. But he's got to win, and he needs help. And who's that he needs help from? That's right, you're looking at him, the owner of the Hulkamaniacs, because I hold Saltmarsh's fate in my hands. And that's in one hand, and the other hand, I hold Swartz's fate. I've got both atoms in my hands. No, you know what, just this week, Hulkamaniacs, 90 points, took down, I'm hung, 62 Rogers 18, Mike Evans, best receiver in the game, and it's not even close. Julio who? I don't even know if Julio's playing anymore. And the Giants defense, oh my goodness, 21 points. Again, this just gets me to four wins, not a huge thing. Then again, it does keep me out of the worst record in the league. Um, 12 weeks without a tight end touchdown. 12. 
That's right, we played 12 weeks, and I've had 12 weeks without a tight end touchdown. Let's see if we can make it a full season sweep. Does that cost me a five? Is that going to cost me five bucks, Adam Swart? Is that not submitting a complete lineup when my tight end doesn't score a touchdown? Just let me know, because we'll just keep throwing money around. Um, Derrick Henry, though, 10 points on the bench. Fourth round pick. Was planning on playing him. Not sure he's going to be a rookie keeper, but would like to see him play better down the stretch. Phillip Rivers, 26 points. The only bright spot, Brian Hung. Everyone else is below nine. Five people below five. He's going to need to win next week. Um, and he's going to need to win and, of course, have Salt Marsh. Well, if he wins, he's in. Doesn't matter what Salt Marsh does. All right, brand new segment. We're calling this one Blast in the Past, where I go back to a message board from years gone by and pull out any old message and read it to you, and this is the one I've got. Now, this one goes back all the way to 2003, of course, that being the year that I won the FTFL title. Here it is. The message post was from Mr. Deesom, and the title was, JFK Conspiracy Has Nothing on This. Now, that caught my eye, no doubt. Holy cow, what could this possibly be about? And I read. Forty years ago this week, JFK was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. From that day on, the events surrounding the sudden murder of our president have been subject to the largest conspiracy theory ever created. Until today. Not only do the colon, ra colon ranges, thanks Bob, call in sick this week, giving the ass crusaders, Mr. Marks here, the most undeserved victory in the history of fantasy football. To top it off, the Colin Rangers were the first team to submit their lineup for this week. The things that make you go, hmm. Surely, time will only add to this new conspiracy. Did the Colin Rangers lay down for Jeff? The only time, of course, anyone will ever do such an act. Did Jeff, our fantastic commissioner, and literal Peyton Manning ass-kisser have anything to do with it? Were there any outside forces involved in the whole deal? And are they hiding behind the proverbial grassy knoll? We may never know, but what we do know is that this situation is the biggest travesty in the FTFL history next to Jeff's championship win of last year, of course. That was a doozy. We'll bring that segment back. I like that. But reading old rants. Last couple games of the week, Bazinga 5 and 6, taking on Lincoln Woods at 3 and 8. Bazinga gets the win, moves to 6 and 6, and because of a prior win against Salt Marsh, he is in the playoffs. Final score of that game was 109 and a half, 267. Um, ben 22, Emmanuel Sanders 23 and a half, pretty much all in the fourth quarter. If you're watching that game, it was amazing. And Justin, I kicked three 50 yard field goals before halftime. Tucker had 20, being carried by a kicker. I guess. Kick your way to the playoffs. However you get there, you just got to get there. Julio, I mentioned his name earlier, four points. Without A.J. Green, he is going to absolutely need Julio. If he has any chance of going anywhere in the playoffs. If you're John, OBJ had 21. Gaskowski had 11. The vaunted Vikings defense. <gasps> Two points. Dig a hole, John. The Vikings defense is so. You know what? Wait, wait. Maybe you should keep them. Them and OBJ. That's what I would do if I were you. No, I wouldn't. Um, you know what? He also started someone named Peyton Barber this week. Scored a half a point. Thanks to the dollar, said someone hopefully not running the Yankees. So, now, John has missed the playoffs three years in a row. I thought it was going to be longer. He was actually 8-5 and five and won the division all, just back in 2013. John, I know brighter times are ahead for you and I, buddy. Don't give up the fight. Last game, Ryan Deesom, cities and balls at 7-4, taking on the pack attack at 3-8. and eight. 95 for Ryan, 64.5 for Eric. If you're Ryan, you are now, I guess, fighting for second place. I seeding wise, that means you get the sixth place. Uh, sorry, the yeah, the sixth place team as opposed to being in the four-five battle. Seven and nine in double digits. The uh, one of the other players had nine points, and so a really, really good showing. No one above 18. So just an all-around solid effort by Deesom's team. He is going to, of course, play in the first round. If you're the pack attack, Stafford 12, Sturgis 10, KC 14. Who cares? Ingram had his biggest game of the year, and he was on your bench. You are now officially on the clock for next year. Here we go. Wrap this week up. Stud of the week, Drew Buzzsaw Breeze, 36 points. He is the best player on the best team that money can buy. And to think, 10 years ago, someone traded a second-round pick for him. The best fantasy player, 10 years running. And he got a decent for it! Scrub that. Scrub that off the seat. Just let's finally do it. Swart, you've got power. Make it happen. The dud, 
My tight ends, the duds are my tight ends. Zero points this week, zero touchdowns all season. I can't buy a tight end that will score a touchdown. I tried, but I can't do it. Decent update, a salty. Second time this year you've had your bench outscore your starters. You have the lowest efficiency rate in the league. You have lost four games in a row. Your playoff hopes are just a thread, a single thread, albeit still exists. But the way you've managed your team this year has been pretty pitiful. Next and final week of the regular season in the FTFL, Fantasy Bowl preview, maybe. Kramerica at 93, I take that back. The Yankees. At 9-3, taking on Manamana. At 9-3, Adam Swartz, I'm hung, desperately needing a victory 6-6, six six, taking on the surging two in a row. If we win next week, we can call it a streak. Hulkamaniacs at 4-8. Bazinga, 6-6, six six, taking on Lincolnwood 3-9. Ryan Deesom, Cities and Balls at 8-4, taking on the Architect 7-5. A little bit of a grudge match. It's right to wrap up the season. And lastly, Adam's Radioactive Monkeys at 5-6, and six, desperately needing to win and help, taking on the pack attack of Eric, 3-9. and nine. This has been the FTFL Weekly Update. I appreciate you tuning in this week. I wish you all the best as we now kickstart this holiday season, and we'll see you next week in the FTFL Weekly Update.